He is really one of the great 20th century American composers. Moondog was a sort of legendary cult hero in New York. Everybody knew who Moondog was. Uh, he was very often photographed and interviewed. He was on radio and television in the newspapers, a real New York fixture. And he stood at Columbus Circle as sort of a living statue slash busker. He was dressed in a long uh, Viking cloak with a spear and Viking helmet. He was blind and essentially self-educated. And he was uh, writing these amazing compositions in Braille. Just a, such a unique voice and really manages to take you into a whole world. What I've found with uh, the music of Moondog is this sense of wonder. The more I experience of the music of Moondog, the more I think that he, he's one of the great American musicians. My first introduction to Moondog was Tower Records and I just saw his uh, album covers and was like, what, <laughs> who is that? <laughs> He's kind of an enigma and I think the way I saw that record cover was the way that people saw him on the street. So I think he just, he used his, his persona as entry point into the music. His music is distinct, it influenced a lot of people and uh, he was really onto his, just his own thing. He led into the minimalists. Uh, Philip Glass actually cites him as an influence. Very diatonic melodies, very repetitive. He writes lots of canons. One of the big factors in, in taking on this project was so many people I talked to didn't know who Moondog was. And it wasn't being played in New York. It wasn't being performed in the States, really. So we really felt like this was the band to, to do this. So we had just a very successful uh, show uh, in New York. These are not um, just performances of the sheet music. These are realizations and reimaginings of Moondog's uh, work. In all of the performances over the years of Moondog's music that I've seen, the best are those who really feel what Moondog was trying to do rather than just what the notes on the page are. And I think this, this group gets it. They really do. Having Kronos Quartet involved in this project is really a dream come true for me personally. Complexity, simplicity, all these things ultimately don't matter. It's, it's what the listener gets to experience. And you can look at the sheet music of a Moondog piece, and you might think it'd be very, very simple to just accomplish that and play it. But what I've found is his music demands the utmost skill and every note needs to be inflected, needs to lead to a place. And in a sense, you have to have this childlike agility. It's all like best musicians I can think of in New York, um, and then the guests, just to add another element. It's sort of giving new life to a very specific thing and sort of broadening it. So we're bringing a lot of new colors and new concepts to some music that we're also at the same time really trying to stay true to. It was very interesting to reverse engineer what I think was in his mind and to translate that to uh, instruments in the Ghost Train uh, palette. So this is a very large project. There are a lot of people involved and members of the band keep arranging more songs and it's just uh, this spigot that won't turn off and more and more music is coming out. It's a 16 piece orchestra with singers, Joan Wasser, Karen Mantler, Jarvis Cocker. So many great, uh, unique singers uh, have, have joined and we're just so excited about this. This is probably the biggest thing this band has ever taken on. We've taken on a lot of big things, but nothing like this. Mm -hmm.